Hey guys, in this video, I wanna talk to you about how hypothyroidism is possibly the number one cause of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So first and foremost, the question for most of you is probably what is SIBO or what is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Hopefully the name gives it away because this is a condition where basically there's an overgrowth of microorganisms in the small intestine, which is normally a rather sterile organ. So unlike the colon or the large intestine, the small intestine usually has little to no bacteria. And this is because in the small intestine, there are tons of microvilli that absorb the nutrients from the foods that we break down in our stomach via the stomach acid. So a really short lesson here on digestive function or digestive anatomy. Digestion starts in the mouth. I usually say it starts in the mind because the nervous system rules digestion. But we break down food in the mouth that secretes amylase and digestive enzymes that break down carbohydrates. That goes through the esophagus or down our throat to our stomach. And in the stomach, the majority of the food that we didn't break down in our mouth is further broken down and ultimately liquidized and mixes with bile where it's sent to our small intestine and the nutrients that are basically broken down and freed up from the food that we break down in our stomach is then absorbed in through the small intestinal wall and then the liver filters things out and sends it throughout the body. And then from that point, anything left over is usually sent to the colon where the bacteria in the colon break down any residual fibers or residual food and start to do some nutrient synthesization. So creating things like vitamin B12 and other vitamins and minerals. However, what tends to happen in a person with SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is somewhere along this chain of reactions from the mouth to the small intestine, there is dysfunction where ultimately the food that the person is eating is not being efficiently broken down. And when those partially digested food particles reach the small intestine, they're usually too large to absorb through the microvilli in the small intestine to get into the bloodstream. So what happens on behalf of the body sort of as a protective mechanism or response to this is bacteria start to grow and proliferate to try to break down the food that wasn't properly digested in the stomach. This is why so many studies confirm that one of the major causative factors, if not the most common causative factor of SIBO is digestive dysmotility. So in other words, slow transit time or things like constipation or even delayed secretion of digestive juices or gastric acid like hydrochloric acid all signs of a slow or sluggish digestive system are going to be the major contributing factors to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So in this way, SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is a very simple condition. It's really just the result of poor digestion or particularly slow digestion where the small intestines are overburdened with partially digested or impartially digested foods that are causing the bacteria in the small intestine to come alive. So if we backtrack this, one of the number one reasons that the digestive system and digestive function overall slows down is because of hypothyroidism. In fact, studies like this even point out that it has been reported that SIBO is present in more than half of people with hypothyroidism. And as I've talked about in the past, hypothyroidism does slow down the functioning of the digestive system in every possible way. So hypothyroidism is known to cause things like constipation. It is known to decrease overall digestive motility and transit time. It delays the secretion of the pancreatic enzymes, the hydrochloric acid, and the other gastric acids and juices, and overall slows digestive function. So piecing these things together, digestive motility dysfunction, so delayed transit time or constipation is one of the major reasons that people get SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and hypothyroidism is known to be the major cause for this. Not to mention there is research that shows the strong correlation between people with hypothyroidism and SIBO. So in conclusion, what is SIBO and what causes it? Well, it's an overgrowth of microorganisms in the small intestine, which is primarily caused by impartially digested foods that get into the small intestine that cause bacteria and microorganisms to proliferate. And one of the major reasons for this, other than eating 
poor quality foods, foods too rich in fiber that just don't break down well is going to be the hypothyroidism and basically slow or sluggish digestive function overall. That's really all I wanted to share in this video, but I'm going to be getting into some things that you can do now to start to correct SIBO uh, from this standpoint, particularly related to improving overall thyroid function and digestive function. So definitely stay tuned for that video. Otherwise, for those of you interested in checking out the research studies I was sharing in this video, just to learn more on your own, remember I link all the studies in the description box below. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. So if you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And remember, a lot of this material that I'm sharing in this video and most of our videos related to digestive function, you can find in our Perfect Digestion course where we have a ton of information eight hours of information that teach you how to heal the digestive system from a holistic and natural point of view. So if you're interested in just jumping right into it and grabbing that material, you can learn more about that course by visiting our online wellness academy in the description box below.